All right, here's another video about solving a simple problem by 3D printing a part. Um, this going make jig, you know, you saw that it was having trouble with sawdust evacuation and my hose did not fit the adapter that came with it. So I went on a Libre and I came up with a, um, a little adapter that I thought it thought would work. Um, First one I printed out wasn't quite perfect. I'll show you that in a second. But, um, you know, it's easy to draw on the Libre. Transfer it right over to uh, Creality Slicer. And I designed it so it didn't need supports. At least I thought it didn't. And then I just sent it right down to the printer there. Now this is the second version printing out I'm showing you here. Um, first version didn't quite work 100%, but it did fit and it did prove that... Um, a couple things I wanted to see is like, uh, you know, the alignment of the holes and getting nuts stuck in there so I didn't need inserts and, you know, just the general airflow through it. And this was the original prototype. You can see I got the, you know, all the nuts in there so I don't need inserts. And it's not a perfect print because there was some older filament. So once I got that figured out, I stretched it out a little bit and came up with the final version and printed it out on this K1 and this is just an amazing printer when you use that um, a hyper PLA and when you've got fresh dry hyper PLA it just does a wonderful job I am so happy with it so a couple minutes later there's a um, the final print did it with no supports and uh, I'm really happy the way it came out you can see um, and it's nice that you get a time-lapse video of everything that you print on this if something that should go wrong you can just look at it and see what happened so there it is. Let's go up see if we can get this thing together. And the nuts actually uh, slid right in. So that worked out good. Um, so I'm using the original hardware, the screws that came with this jig, and I just had to add two M5 nuts. And they just, you know, mount in the original holes. And this will allow me to use my um, inch and three quarter vacuum hose and get the proper airflow to uh, eliminate problems. So there it is, pops right on there, and looks just like the uh, drawing I made a little while ago. So, you know, the 3D printer is a real win for, you know, quick things like this and trying to fix small problems. And just thought I'd, you know, share this with you because I know others are going to be buying this jig and um, I'm trying to figure out how to share this file. So let's go down to the shop, try it out. And you can see it uh, fits right on there. Um, there's the original one, and you get a half inch sm smaller than my hose diameter. This was the first one. It didn't quite wrap around far enough to get 100% of the sawdust. So this one, I'll be surprised to see how it works first time here. And the hose actually get, fits right in there. I've learned that for these bigger holes, I'm printing about 0.015 inches bigger on the, um, the diameter when I designed it, 0 0.015, 0 0.02 because it does shrink when it cools. So that's in place. A um, little bit of tight to get that bit in there. You have to turn it a little sideways and then lock it in place. Um, I had to do that just to make sure I could get all the, the sawdust caught. And let's drill our first hole with the vacuum on. And you say, I'll show you at the end a clip of what I got the uh, with the original one without the vacuum. And you can see this actually um, caught 100% of it. Um, a little tough. You got to turn it to get it out because that lip I put on top to keep the airflow going down. And perfect. Not one drop of sawdust left or one loss. So that's a that's a win-win. Um, I think this will really make this jig perfect. Um, definitely can't wait to start making some doors with it. So let's try a piece of ash here because you do get a little bit different chips out of ash than you do walnut. Walnut are, tend to be a little smaller and stringier, and these tend to be a little bit bigger. And so I'm just going to clamp it on there, and again, you can see it's, uh, it, it seems to be working really good. Um, no problem, no dust, uh, everything's working, so, you know, simple solution, uh, didn't take that long to work out, and uh, it, it just solved a problem that I didn't like. And again, there you have it, a perfect clean hole, no sawdust anywhere, so it's a win. 
uh, hose fits nice and tight and uh, it does sit on there nice and tight too. Pretty much amazes me how flat that printer printed it standing up. So let's see, I just wanted to try out my camera slow motion and just see exactly what I wound up with. And uh, this is just a slow motion shot showing all the, the chips and everything, how they do get, you know, thrown right up into it now. Um, that little bit of wraparound past center actually helps the, uh, the airflow get to the backside and push them out, I think. But it, it you know, it just uh, performs perfect. Um, and then this other little screw hole jig fits in there. You do have to twist it sideways to get it in because of that top lip. I mean, I could probably uh, notch it a little bit, but I don't, I'm not going to. And, you know, the drill bit they give you is long enough, so everything works good. And, again, you do have to twist it like that to get it out. So, um, actually, uh, very happy with the results. And that drill really does a wonderful job. A nice clean cut, a uh, nice clean bottom and everything. So, a little bit slow drilling, but that's the way Forstner bits are. So, this is what I got originally, if you remember, the first video. Um sawdust got stuck in there and it's so precision that just a little bit of sawdust made it so you couldn't get the bit out you had to go back and blow it out and stuff to get it out where this comes right out and it makes it real easy to use and um, i think it actually looks good too it's amazing how you can get you know high quality prints off of a fairly cheap printer anymore thanks for watching please subscribe